Hello and welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 21. In this tutorial we are going to focus on indexing. So why would we need to create a set of indices? Well, let's look at our graphics CPP, and more specifically where we are creating our vertices for our textured square. So if you notice, we, we have this bottom left, top left, top right, bottom left, top right, bottom right. So our bottom left and our top right are both getting repeated. So it's kind of just like a waste of data having these. And you can imagine if we had a huge model with a lot of vertices that get repeated, it's just a lot of wasted data. So the idea is instead of repeating these, we'll have another array to store the indices. And you know, when you load in a model and stuff, it'll already have this data. Uh, it's not like we would actually normally, you know, program at all. But in this example, we don't have a model to load in, so we're just going to have to program it. So what we are going to do is we're going to create an array of D words called indices. And we know that our bottom left and our top right were both being repeated. So I can take out the repeat. And now we know that, all right, our bottom left is at index, or it's at the uh, position zero. And then the top left is at position one. The top right is position two. And the bottom right is at position three. So if we draw this out, all right, so let's say this is our square, our four vertices, and we, are going to plot our indices on here. So our bottom left uh, was our first vertex, so that'll be index zero. Our top left will be one, our top right will be two, and our bottom right will be three, because that's the order that they were laid out in our vertex array. We know that we're going to have two triangles here. The first triangle is going to be from zero to one to two, so for that, our indices would be 0, 1, 2. And then our second triangle will be from 0 to 2 to 3. So that would be 0, 2, 3. And note that we're keeping this in clockwise order. So when we go to put this in our program, we would have... 0, 1, 2, 0, 2, 3. All right, so next we need to create our indices buffer and load these indices in. So to do that, we must declare it in our graphics header. Let's go down to where we were declaring our vertex buffer. We're going to create a buffer for our indices. Now let's go back to our graphics CPP. The way that we are going to create our index buffer is after we create our vertex buffer, we are just going to work on creating our index buffer. So first we create a buffer description just like the vertex buffer. We zero the memory. We use a default usage. For our byte width, it's going to be the size of our D word since our indices are all of type D word times the array size of our indices array. For the bind flags, this part's different. We're going to use an index buffer instead of the vertex buffer. We don't need CPU access, or miss flags and CPU access flags are zero. We create our sub resource data, and then we create that buffer. So now we need to change how we are drawing our object. Before we were just using the vertex buffer, but now we want to use the index buffer. So we are still going to set our vertex buffer, but now we need to set our index buffer. So we're going to call input assembly uh, set index buffer, and we pass in the index buffer, and then we pass in the uh, format for our indices. So we were using a D word that's the same as just a 32-bit unsigned integer. And the last argument is the offset, which we don't want to offset it, so we'll just put zero. Now, instead of calling draw, we are going to call draw indexed. Draw index has an extra argument. So we have our index count, which will be six. Our start index location is zero, and then our, our base vertex location. 
So we're starting at the beginning of the index buffer and the vertex buffer, so we will pass zero for both of those. If we go to test this, hopefully I didn't forget anything. Let's see what we get. All right, there we go. We got, uh, we got the piano in the hello world. So it's exactly what we had in the last tutorial, except now we are using an index buffer. That is all that we are going to cover for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we are probably going to get into constant buffers.